You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. Could you even imagine going from a part-time dental assistant job to owning two online businesses and launching a membership within two years and with absolutely zero experience in online business marketing or any of the tech that comes along with it? Now, that's exactly what this one woman did, and I'm very excited to bring you her interview today, so please stay tuned. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne, and in my 23 years of business and marketing, I've built many brands to become multi-billion dollar companies, and just in the last 10 years, I've built two online businesses of my own from my dining room table with two little babies running around at my feet. I've made it my mission to inspire you to get out of your own way and become the successful business owner who's living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. This is She's the Business podcast made by women for women. This is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. My special guest today is the lovely Megan Scott, who is the founder of the Gut Healing Community, which is an innovative community site supporting people with gut health concerns, um, maybe problems, and really looking for help to navigate the absolute plethora of information out there and find natural, healthy solutions to their gut health. I'm sure we could all do with some improvements in our gut health. Now, Megan is also the founder of the Wellness Media Studio, which is a web design agency, basically helping specifically women in the wellness industry to boost their online presence with stunning branding and search-friendly websites. Now, Megan owns both of these businesses, and she also launched a membership for the gut healing community, which is really about helping busy mums to create gut-friendly, lunchbox-friendly, child-friendly, you know, food for their families and to just take away all of that stress and time-consuming research when you're looking for the kind of recipes that are going to help your family's health. Now, this interview that I'm sharing with you today, we actually recorded a couple of years ago, but I felt that it was still really relevant to bring to you today because Megan shares so much about her journey over the first couple of years of her business, or businesses, I should say, um, and some really important insights and learnings that she had from diving in as somebody who had absolutely no online experience at all to starting an online business, um, starting a second one, being able to quit her part-time job, the ultimate dream, and then launching this membership offering, membership community. Um, So she essentially started pretty much three businesses within the space of two years, and they are all still going today. So absolutely very well worth listening into this interview and learning what it was that Megan did to have such a fantastic success and growth in such a short time. You know, she really leapfrogged through so many years that many of us take to learn the ins and outs of online business and, you know, how to stitch it all together, what works, what doesn't. So without further ado, let me play the interview for you. Hi, I'm Jessica Osborne and I'm here with Megan from the Gut Healing Community. Um, We are going to talk today a bit about Megan's journey into entrepreneurship and how she managed um, her business as a side hustle until really recently when she made that call, she was ready to quit Um, her job and become a full-time business owner. So I'm sure that's something heaps of you are interested in because um, many of us, myself included, I guess we start out in business um, running a side hustle and looking for the opportunity to to quit the nine-to-five security ties. I guess we hold on to them um, because it's such a catch-22 when you're in business. You want to have the money coming in and but you also need time to build the business and I think that that's something loads of people struggle with um, but Megan you've managed to do it so we're here to talk today about your journey and what you've done so why don't you start out by telling us a bit about your business and who you serve. So like you said my business is the gut healing community and we talk about all things gut health and gut healing. Uh, I have a support group where people that are new to the gut healing world or 
even people who've been on the journey for a long time, we all hang out in that group and share information and help each other direct people in the right direction to get help if we can't help them in there. So um, I obviously have blogs and recipes, things like that for resources for my audience. Yeah. And I also offer another service that I get, I help businesses that help people with gut health issues get in the spotlight so I share the business on my page and promote them Excellent. With what we do here yeah and how long ago did you start the business uh, a bit over two years ago now but yeah wow yeah time <laughs> has flown hasn't it <laughs> I doesn't feel like I've been doing much else really <laughs> yeah it's amazing and so tell us, um, I guess, how did you come up with this particular idea for this business? Because it's not your profession, is it? No, no, it's through my own personal experience. So Mika, our daughter, had gut health issues, severe gut health issues when she was very young. Yeah. So we got thrown into that world of, you know, nutrition, diets, doctors, naturopaths, nutritionists, and just heaps and heaps of researching. So... At the time when I decided it was time to start a business, that was my world. So I just went for that and... That's great. We just wanted to help people going through similar stuff to us as well because we're probably a step ahead um, to people that are just starting out. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you've spent so much time researching your daughter's gut health issues and, and finding solutions and trying them out and yeah, you just yeah. thought that you could then pass on all that knowledge and help other people... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Save them the time of doing all that same research. That's awesome. So I guess did you think that you would be going into full time business um sooner than you did when you first started? Well, I, I think I thought I would be going in sooner, but I didn't realise I had no idea what I was doing at the time. <laughs> and there's so much to learn. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't until, you know, a bit further along when the pressure was on to you know, make a bit more money and, you know, I didn't really want to spend much time, more time at work, so I had to really amp things up and get things going. Yeah. So tell us, I guess, a bit about how did you do that? What, um, I, you know, when you figured out, wow, I'm a bit overwhelmed or I'm feeling stuck, um, you know, how did you move through that so that you could grow the business more and, and actually um, continue with it? Well, I started sort of choosing the one thing each day. So, I'd, okay, what what thing do I need to get done today to help me move forward rather than fluffing and spending hours on social media or whatever? What's the one thing that's going to move me forward? Yeah. And, 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 yeah. And then... Excellent. What did you struggle with the most, do you think, in those early days? Uh, I guess the know-how, I, I had no idea about business or marketing or anything like that. And then tech stuff, which, I mean, I've learned so much over the couple of years. Um, people are coming to, to me for help with that now. But, um, yeah, yeah, and just the mindset and self-belief in yourself. And, like, I didn't even tell anyone I started this business for quite a while after I started it because I was scared that it, I might fail. So Wow. Yeah, that I think is really important, actually. And so... You know, that mindset, I, I remember you having some struggles with that right at the beginning and just such a lack of confidence in yourself that you could even make this happen. Um, but you were, you wanted to do it and you, you were giving it a good try, but you, you really, like, struggled flipping between wanting to do it and then having the, the lack of confidence in doing yeah. it. So, yeah, I guess, like, tell us, how, do you, how did you overcome that fear and do you still struggle with that now? Uh, yeah, overcoming it was, I mean, obviously your coaching helped a heap, um, being in support groups with other women who are on the same journey, uh, yeah. have a business accountability buddy and we just bounce ideas around off each other and that's been amazing. Yeah, awesome. just Facebook groups and just like, so if I was having a bad day, first thing in the morning I'd just listen to a podcast like Mind Your Business or something where you, you know, get a positive boost, you, you can do this. Now, yeah. <laughs> you know. yeah. Oh, I love that podcast. And like yeah, I, think, I do the same. It's such a good one because it's, um, you know, when you are feeling like just 
overwhelmed or stuck and you've got so many things going through your head, it can be really hard just to actually take some action on one thing because you think, yeah. what should yeah. I even do? And I think it's such a good practice that you've got into and it's what I do as well is just actually step right away from it um, yeah. you know, go and listen to a podcast and it might not even be talking about anything to do with what you're thinking about but it does help just I guess get that motivation get a bit of clarity and just that belief in yourself and and you come back you know all of a sudden with clarity and I'm not sure exactly how that works with the brain but I think yeah. sometimes <laughs> stepping away from that to-do list and everything going through your head and actually you know getting it to think about something else by listening to a podcast um, it just works wonders so yeah that's yeah, fantastic absolutely. and yeah, obviously yeah. you do a lot of work on it on, on your mindset all the time so it's something you don't just sort of cure it one day and it's gone it's it's a continual work and no yeah. that's what I used to try to do at the start <laughs> like, yeah, I've got this mindset down and then obviously something would happen a week later and you're like oh no I'm back here again <laughs> <laughs> everyday yeah. thing really yeah and I think once you realize it's like it, it, that's normal and that's what everybody does from the most successful people down to you know everyone starting out um, you know the ones that I guess that make it are the ones who just continue to work on themselves and and develop and and don't give up like actually just go no I this is this isn't the end of the road it's not a showstopper this is just something I need to work through and you find a way to do it so, yeah, that's great. Well done to you. And um, so, you know, obviously you're a mum as well and you were working and you've started a new business. How did you manage all of that in, in the time that you had? Which nothing, nothing. Oh, <laughs> it, it, it hasn't been easy, but I'm, I'm a pretty determined um, <laughs> person. So, yeah, yeah. I guess there's been quite a few late nights. Um, I do sometimes work just a, way too hard and then really need to stop and take some time out because I haven't mm -hmm. scheduled in that time out in between. But, yeah, just working really hard on the um, tasks that move you forward at, in, in your short time and then, you know, at night time when you're a bit more tired, you can do some, you know, less brain hard tasks. And, yes. You know, just, yeah, and but now, yeah, just taking a break when things aren't working, like, if I'm tired, yeah. if I've spent three hours trying to do a task that should have taken me half an hour, and then it's time to move away. No, and you're just not productive when you're doing that. And then you're no. spending that time trying to do that task and you could be getting some sleep or doing yeah. something else that's important. So that's such a good, um, I think, way to look at it and, and to go with the flow, you know, work when you're uh, in the zone and get things done, but make sure you're scheduling that time for you as well, like downtime, yeah. your brain needs time to rest and, yeah. you know, I think yeah. as well with that rest is always when you do get more clarity as well, um, you know, it's something we can get so busy just doing the day-to-day -day stuff, you know, I mean, you can go down an Instagram hole for a couple of hours and get lost <laughs> and you're thinking, well, is this is that two hours, you know, really well, time well spent or has it been a little bit of help with the business but, you know, is it really worth that amount of time? And I think, you know, just that mindfulness of what you're, what you're doing, what you're spending your time on and being intentional about how much time you do spend on each type of activity because you should be focusing on the ones that are going to help develop your business or sell your products or market them so that you yeah. are, you know, that's why you were in business at the end of the day is to generate <laughs> revenue. <laughs> so, yeah, great. So you mentioned just before that you, with the Gut Healing Community, you also have a Facebook group um, that supports people with gut health. Do you want to tell me a bit more about that group? Like who's it for and what kind of things do you discuss in there? Well, it's for um, a lot of people come and looking for us when we're, you know, obviously when they've gone to the doctor or they've got gut issues and they, they really want some help or someone to relate to about their, their problems or, you know, they're looking for answers. Yeah. Um, so, so many of us are in there have already been through a lot and can help them with a starting point or direct them, you know, where to go, what type of health professional they need to see. Yeah. Um, we share all sorts of things in there, our stories, our recipes, um, yeah, different ideas. Like at the moment we've got a few lunchbox posts for kids' lunchbox. Oh, great. Um, yeah. yeah. How many members have you got now? Um, just, I think it's nearly about, yeah, just over 1,600 now. So 
it was sort of slow going at the start and now I'm getting just requests all day, every day. So Oh, that's fantastic. It's lovely to have a good community, but it's a bit worrying how many people are having gut issues. <laughs> yeah. Or just I think we're just getting so much more aware um, that so yeah. many issues actually can be linked to the gut and yeah. it's something that we you know, I, you know, you think, why do we not know this? You know, yeah. medicine's so advanced, but it's just been, I think, such an under-researched area, really, of health. So yeah, yeah, just shows, yeah. So many people are, are seeking that advice because there's not much out there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, or there yeah. is, and it's all confusing. But either way, um, <laughs> yeah. it's really good that you've got that community. So, how do people find your group? What's it called? Um, the Gut Healing Community is just support and chat group, nice and simple. Yeah, um, and they can find yeah. it on your pay Facebook page? Yeah, Facebook page or just usually when you type in the Gut Healing Community, the, both the group and the page will come up in the search bar of Facebook. But, oh, um, okay. Yeah, we've also got experts in there. We've got um, Caroline from Aussie Allergy Mum who obviously knows all about allergies. And yeah. then we've got Melissa, our holistic nutritionist who has had a heap of personal experience both with all the kids and herself about gut health and um, yeah also studied to become a nutritionist because of that so she knows a heap of <laughs> info so we can always tag her for help yeah that's great amazing and I think Leah, I see your group is so active and engaging like what do you think has made it so successful uh, I was trying to think about this one. Um, I think, yeah, just the fact that everyone really wants to help each other and um, mm. offer ideas and suggestions. Um, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of caring, supportive people in there and only, I know, yeah. I, like I worry about every single one of them in there. Every yeah. Every single one of them. Help them. Um, but, yeah, so. Yeah. It is. It's just a very supportive group and we share relevant information. Yeah. And everybody wants to help everyone else. It's fantastic. It's so good to see. So, and now you are taking your, or you have been taking your business in a new direction, I guess, with um, developing some online courses. So tell me a bit more about this whole new side of your business and how you came to yeah, decide that was what you wanted to do. Yeah, well, I guess um, I was running a directory and I... Yeah, I just wasn't feeling it that much for that um, side of business, and I, I wanted to more help my audience in in a way. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, uh, with education and stuff because I, I noticed the recurring th themes coming up in my group. Um, you know, the fussy eating program that I've just started now, uh, fussy to foody. Lots mm -hmm. of parents that can't get nice, healing, nutritious foods into their kids, and we had that with Mika, like seriously. <laughs> so yeah. we. Yeah, we. I decided like I, I want to help people get their kids to eat healthy food, like I had to do with Nika, and yeah. thought I'd share the method I used to do that. Oh, great! So, yeah. what does the the program look like? How long does it last for? Uh, it's four weeks. So the first week is sort of prep, goal setting, mindset, getting organised, and yeah. then the second week we start in introducing new foods and slowly removing the foods that we don't want them to eat anymore out. And yep. keep amping up a little bit over the next couple of weeks. So, oh, fantastic! Yeah. So you um, are teaching parents about the methods that you've used and, and tried and tested over the yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. After we tried everything, the professionals <laughs> tried to um, help us with, but it didn't work. So this this worked. Yeah. Least, yeah. So you've kind of developed your own method that you know works and then you're going to be teaching that to, to other parents who are having trouble yeah. with yeah. fussy toddlers. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And it's called Fussy to Foodie. Yeah, that's right. Excellent. And so um, you mentioned that you're just about to launch it, is that right? There's a, yeah, it's actually, I've, I've opened it up now so people can jump in if they want to and we'll be closing that on Sunday this week. So. Excellent. Uh, Sunday the 17th, I think. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And kicking off Monday. So. Yeah. And if they miss out on this one, um, then will they be able to, you know, put their name on a wait list for the next program? Yeah, know? yeah. I think I'll run it again. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. In the new year yeah. sometime. Fantastic. And where can they find out more about the program? 
Um, oh, now, I don't have it linked straight up on my website, but um, if you go to Gut Health Education, you can just click on the Plus Eat at 30 program and get a notification in there. Um, or I do have the web address. Can we drop that in the comments after the... Yes, yep, we can put yeah. that in the comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's... Um, so the guthealingcommunity.com slash fussy hyphen to hyphen foodie hyphen program. Yeah, <laughs> in the comments there's lots of hyphens there, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyone who's interested, um, who's got fussy toddlers, then it sounds like an awesome, really short program to just make some yeah. big changes in your household. That's, that's yeah, good. that's a good thing. It doesn't take long if you just stick to the program. Like, yeah. 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 So, and, and, and we implement it gently. Like there's some pretty <laughs> intense food, fussy eating methods out there, but this is a really gentle approach. Um, yeah, we include education, raising your child's awareness about health and nutrition, and then we start adding in the foods in a nice, calm and gentle way. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's really good. So I remember earlier on this year um, you started a new business and you mentioned it very briefly right in the beginning, um, but do you want to talk a little bit more about this now? So you're working, you've already got a business that was still, it's still new, like you're only a couple of years in now, um, but you started another business, so you must be the overachiever, um, <laughs> very, very highly motivated person. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us what is um, what is this business and how did you even come up with the idea of doing it when you're already so busy? Well, I, I, the clients I was working with through the gut healing community, some of them, I, I offered to help one of those ladies with her social media because she just couldn't keep up with it. And so that was my first foot in the door, running doing social media for her a wellness business. And then once that word got around, I added a couple more clients doing that. And then they start coming back and saying, oh, can you do this as well? Can you do this as well? Make some design stuff or, you know. Yeah. What other kind of things do you do for them? Um, I do I, I do build websites, WordPress websites from scratch um, mm -hmm. for wellness businesses. Um, also chatbots, which i um, used a fair bit in my business and getting a lot of um, people on my email list for that. Yeah. Um, also I do some design stuff like branding, say, if people have no idea about branding or can't design stuff, I help maybe just do a series of Facebook or social media templates and Facebook banners, stuff like that. Yeah. And logos as well. And then, um, yeah, the social media management in there as well. So, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And so you run this um, one under a separate business name, so you've kind of separated the Yeah, I've, I've, I've changed that to it's Wellness Media Studio. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can check out my Facebook and Instagram if you like, but I haven't actually had time to do any posts on there because I've been too busy with my clients and my other business, but that'll get happening in the new year. So Yeah, that is, just, that is like the absolute dream business where it comes out of nowhere, kind of, well, yeah. not nowhere, obviously you'd built that trust and, yeah. and obviously you built that amazing relationship through your existing business that those clients came to you for help with something else that you were able to help them with and, and then it's kind of actually evolved into its own business. Um, mm. That's just amazing. Like it's such a fantastic story and I think it really just shows, you know, when you see an opportunity and decide to take it, take a chance on it, how it can just actually evolve into, um, you know, a real thing, a real business and now yeah. you've got two businesses. So Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. So what kind of... Um, <laughs> people do you work with for the the well the sort of branding and social media side? Yeah, mostly wellness businesses like mm -hmm. healers, holistic type health stuff, uh, naturopaths, nutritionists, and also e-commerce stores that sell you know natural products or eco products, things yeah. like that. Um, yeah, just mostly in the wellness and health space. I have yeah. other like mum style businesses and social media businesses, stuff like that. But that, that's my main focus. Yeah. I think that's a really good thing to, you know, have that focus on the niche that you just know so well as well because it means yeah. that you already understand the business, you understand the type of content, yeah. um, and it's a lot easier for you to both work together in, in a way that's um, 
I guess, beneficial for everybody. So, yeah, it's yeah. really good. Well done. What did you find um, the most challenging in the setup of your new business? Uh, the new one? Um, yeah. Just having time to do it all. Uh, well, when I've already had the other <laughs> side of things going. Yeah. Uh, it's like the website was a bit slow because I had, you know, jobs going on already. So, um, but that's all right. It all is all coming together really nicely. You know, I'm patient. It, I can just give it time, but also yeah. outsourced a little bit to help me move forward. So. Of course, yeah. And, you know, build the plane while you're flying it. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> just get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <it. laughs> that's really good. I know. I think that's exactly, you know, it's such a good way to do it because you can, you know, learn about what people are wanting from the actual clients themselves and yeah, evolve and develop and, you know, yeah. really be agile and in how you shape your business in that live environment. So it is something I think a lot of people find really hard to do because you kind of want to have all the answers before you start, um, mm -hmm. the plan of what you're going to do, and then you start and it just takes so long to really get moving because you've taken yeah. so long building it. Um, whereas if you can start off with that real minimum, you know, minimum viable product, or in your case, you pretty much started without even the real business there um, and kind of <laughs> created it once yeah. you already had a client, I think, you know, you are, you are building it as you are already working in it and yeah. you know that what you're offering is what those people are wanting. So it's, yeah, yeah. it's fantastic that it has worked out that way and um, you know, it's such a great way to grow a business quickly. Yeah, I guess on the other side of things, I've done some jobs as well and I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to include that. So that's been good too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that yeah. <laughs> yeah. Testing exactly who you really want to be working with as yeah. well. Yeah. So what's been um, your biggest learning about running online services businesses now that you've got two under your belt that you, <laughs> you've launched? What do you think? Um, yeah, just, just, I guess just going for it, um, doing that one thing a day, like I said, um, the most important thing for prioritising and just those quick decisions because if you sit there and procrastinate the analysis paralysis thing, you're just not going to go forward yeah. and... Failing is okay. Um, it's it's learning, and you know you can do a better job at next time round. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's so good. You can definitely um, have another go, and you'll always be able to improve, no matter no matter yeah. what it's been. So yeah, and getting good systems in place is amazing too. Makes your life so much easier. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and that, you know because when you're starting, you can often kind of get by just putting doing it manually or putting it together as you go but I think you know you very very quickly need the systems in place so that you can be efficient and so that you can actually grow the business otherwise you spend your whole time doing the manual management of it when you could put tech in place to, to manage it for you so yeah. but you have been learning everything tech in your journey over the last couple of years so you know what has that been one of your most surprising things about um, running a business yeah, yeah. yeah. I've always um, not really enjoyed that. Not really enjoyed that side of things. Um, I do love design, and artistic stuff, but I've never done it on, on digit digitally. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just, um, so you've learnt a lot about yourself, and that's great. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I think I shared a picture the other day about the bottom of the step. I can't do this. The next step. Oh. You better do it. And anyway, by the time they step yeah. it, like I did it. So that's pretty much the feelings you can go through every day. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes that's so true. And just knowing that you can actually get to that top step, you just have to take the step forward to get yeah. there, don't you? You can't yeah. stay on the bottom step and expect to suddenly be on the top step. You've got to go yeah. through all the phases of um, believing in yourself, giving it a go, trying, learning, and then making it. So well yeah. done. And what has been, I guess, your biggest win or, you know, what you've taken away from this is? Um, um, I guess just, yeah, building your self-confidence and doing the mindset um, stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Just having the belief in myself that I could do it. Like, you know, starting one business was one thing, but, you know, oh, I'll just start another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, just... Um, yes, that was such a massive transformation going from... You know, when you first started the gut healing community yeah. and just 
really yeah. feeling so lost and so overwhelmed and really yeah. you, know, you really had those thoughts of like can I even do this I don't even know anything about it to you know a year later you're you're starting a second business on top of that one and evolving the first one and finding like what was the right way to really move forward with it and what was the niche how you know how did you want the business to look because I think when we start out we design and you know, we come up with a business concept or a design of a business that we think is what we want. But yes. once you start doing it, um, you know, you do potentially can change that vision and think, well, I thought that would be good, but actually the reality of it isn't really what I want to be doing. So, you know, you do find what you prefer and you can adapt and, and flex. And, and, um, you know, yeah, that's the awesome thing about online business. You're not, you're not stuck in anything. You can pivot and change. Yeah. So that's why it's great to just go in and get started because then you can change down the track. So Yeah, that's fantastic. You've done such an amazing job. So I guess the thing that everybody wants to know is how did you know that it was time to quit your job and go full-time into business? Well, um, I guess I started in the gut healing community. I had businesses approaching me instead of me having to approach businesses, which... Yeah, you know, that felt pretty good. Yes. <laughs> and um, yeah, people just joining my group and Facebook page, like in the hundreds every week, my business page. And so I knew that, you know, I'm like, I have to make the most of this and really do something with it. And yeah. I built this massive, <laughs> massive for me um, audience, and now I've actually got to do something a bit more worthwhile with it. So now mm -hmm. now's the time. Um, yeah, also with my other new business, I've had pretty much an endless stream of work coming in, so I felt confident. And also, um, yeah, I just didn't feel aligned with my job anymore at work. Um, yeah. Really nice people, but, yeah, just that heart-centred work just wasn't there. I really wanted mm. to do something I was passionate about. Yeah. And you see, so you just sort of felt that this is definitely the right time. You've got everything working. Yeah. You can see that it's there and yes, it's time to go all in. <laughs> Amazing. Well done. So th I think that um, kind of wraps up, I guess, our interview for today. So I just wanted to thank you so much for your time, Megan. Um, I think that, you know, our audience is going to find this super interesting and really insightful and there's been so many learnings that you've shared and tips um, that I hope you know you and the audience can take this away and help yourselves with your own business as well. Um, it's been a massive pleasure working with you over the time and, and helping you work towards your vision. Um, you know, I really can't wait to see what you've got coming next and um, all the while being a mum as well. It's just fantastic. So well done to you. Thank you. I just want to uh, thank so much for your guidance on the way. It's been amazing. I can't imagine <laughs> how, how much slower I would have moved without you helping me with your wealth and knowledge for marketing and always got the time for me. So thanks so much for that. Oh, thank you. That's lovely to hear. <laughs> it's no problem at all. It's been, it's been such a pleasure, as I said. So thank you so much, Megan, and um, we will talk to you soon. Okay, thanks, Jess. Okay, <laughs> bye. Do you know what the number one challenge reported by the women joining my Facebook community, My Tribe, said that they were struggling with with their marketing in 2021 and, in fact, even in 2020 as well? And that was exactly how they should reach their ideal client. How do they even get in front of them in order to build their audience in the first place? That was it. And it wasn't a pick and mix. Um, I didn't give them that answer. It was a free text question. So they could write in there anything they wanted at all. And the number of times that I saw somebody say how to create awareness, how to get in front of my ideal client and build my audience. So many people just challenged by it. And why is that when there's such an abundance of ways that we can get in front of the ideal client? And I think it's probably that is exactly it. It's so overwhelming, isn't it? What should you do? What should you choose? What are the best ways? Whatever it is that you're doing right now might not be working. And I think it's a great time to sit back, reflect and figure out what's the right way for you to do it. What are the ways that you're going to reach your prospective clients in 2022? 
So if that sounds like you, if that might have been what you wrote down in the questions on what is your biggest challenge with your marketing currently, then you're going to absolutely love the new freebie that I've just put together for you. It's called 12 Brilliant Ways to Reach Your Ideal Client. And in it, I share with you the 12 in my view, 12 top ways that you could use in your marketing plan this year to reach a bigger, broader audience in order to attract those ideal clients in to your inner circle, into your, you know, really well-defined audience and become real leads for you. So if you'd like to get your hands on this brand new freebie, then all you need to do is go to jessicaosborne.com slash 12 ways. So it's one, two ways. Very easy. You can download it there. And this is a little bit of great, uh, a great resource for your planning, for the planning of the new year. Um, see what you're going to change up. What is it that you maybe haven't been doing that you could be doing? And what are those things that you've been doing and they're not very effective? And maybe you're going to drop them out of your plan this year. So please head over, grab the freebie. Um, if you want the link that it's in the show notes and let's get you moving on up, having more success with your marketing in 2022.